Good morning, everyone. Happy, what is today, Tuesday? Hello, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hello. 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 beat me to it this morning, wishing everybody a happy, or a good morning, rather. You beat me. Are you guys getting in the Christmas spirit? Have you guys put up a Christmas tree yet? Yes. Yeah? Do you guys use, uh, do you have a, 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 a real tree or do you have an artificial tree? An artificial. Artificial? Yes. Yes, me too. Does anybody go get a, a, a real tree? Anybody have a real tree this, uh, this year? No, I don't. No. I have the board. You have what? Sorry. I have the two, the real and the artificial. Ah, okay. So where do you put the real tree? Which, which one's bigger and where do you put each one? Um, well, it is out of my father's house. Ah, okay. So is that, do you have a real tree there or an artificial tree? Um, a real tree, but on, on the garden. Very good. Very good. Um, do you guys get together? Do you have your family do it or who, who sets up the Christmas tree? Do you, is it a family event or is one person in charge of putting it up? Mm -hmm. All my family. My whole family? Anybody else? Yeah, the same with, with my family. We Did you? Together. Okay. Did you put up your tree earlier this year, or is do you have? Is it the same time every year? Do you set a, a certain certain time every year, or because we're all at home, most of us? Did you end up putting the tree up earlier? No, on the uh, that time. Uh, we, we don't put the, the, uh, the tree either mm. earlier. When it's Christmas, we, we, we do it. All right. So um, I was taking a look at the roundtable videos, and I have most of them. For some reason, let me go back into Microsoft Teams. For some reason, this morning, when I went into group two or team two and team four under files, this is what I get. And this is some problem or issue. I don't know if it's just on my end. Um, anyone in group two, can you guys access your files or is Microsoft being difficult this morning? Mm, let me see, teacher. Because for some reason, when I go, I got everybody else's video, but team two, team four, this is what I see. It says, we are setting up your file directory. Try refreshing the page after a few minutes and check back later. I can access the feature. You can or cannot? I can. Okay. In which group? Is that group two? Yes. All right. So it's probably just me. Maybe it's my... Browser, who knows, but I'll keep trying, but that's why so far I don't have the video. So I'll try again a little bit later. I'll try from another computer uh, this afternoon and uh, hopefully I can get your videos. So that's why team two and team four, uh, your videos do not appear at this time, um, but they were really good videos. I'm enjoying them. I'm going through and listening and uh, really like when you guys are sharing your videos along with the audio, it adds a lot to the conversation to see your faces, even when you're not speaking. Um, I think one of the uh, pro tips here when you're doing this kind of engagement, this kind of activity where you have several of you 
um, you know, in a, in a discussion is especially if you have, if you're at home or you're in a place where you have a lot of background noise that you might want to mute your microphone when you're not speaking. You can keep the video going if your broadband connection is decent, but when you're not speaking, it's good to mute your mic when, especially when you have a lot of background noise. If you don't have a lot of background noise, it's not that, uh, not that bad. It's not that much of a problem. But sometimes the background noise can interfere when someone else is speaking. So um, it's kind of a matter of just being alert. And then when you want to speak, just unmute your microphone and jump in and, and then mute your microphone again when you're not speaking. So that's kind of a pro tip to think about when you're doing activities like this, where you're in an online meeting and you have kind of an open discussion, but you know that you're in a, a place where maybe you have you know, people screaming in the background or the washing machines running or, or whatever the case may be, but really good reflections. And uh, I'm going to wait until I get all the videos uploaded. And then I want to share these with the rest of the propate teachers. This is going to be uh, very good for us to listen to what you guys have to say and uh, listen to what you have to think about using technologies uh, this semester. Okie dokie, Smokey. Here we go. So this is our um, roundtable event. I've included the link in Microsoft Teams if you want to check out not only your own performance, if you want to check out your classmates' performances. But uh, very nice job there. Now, um, let me go here. Let's look at today. Today what I'd like to do is I want to spend time working on our e-portfolios. And in Microsoft and Notion, I'm sorry, in Notion for today, I go into our class page for today. Let me share the link here in our chat so you have it. Here is today's class Notion page. If you want to open that up, or if you can just follow along as I'm sharing my screen. Today I want to answer the question, how can I personalize my personal and professional e-portfolio that, not that'll, that will allow me to organize the way I share what I know, what I can do, and my ethics during my academic studies and beyond. So remember that your e-portfolio, number one, is your personal space, a space that you're going to develop and maintain throughout not only your academic um, stay, your academic classes, but also when you get into the field, when you start to teach, it's also something that's always good to maintain. Right, so it's always going to be with your accompany your uh, your resume. You have your resume, and you have your e-portfolio. When you talk with a potential employer, a school, right, that you want to work, you can show off basically what what you know, what you can do, and your ethics. So the second aspect of it that's really important is to ma maintain those three areas of your professional development. What you know, your knowledge, your skills, and your ethics, your values, your attitude, your disposition. Right? All these three come together to re really demonstrate what kind of person you are professionally speaking. All right, so this is really the intention of doing an e-portfolio. We're just now starting. Maybe you haven't thought about having such a space before, but as you're getting into the university and you're becoming more proficient, you're gaining more knowledge, more experiences, the e-portfolio is a great way to demonstrate that to others. So I don't want you to feel that, well, okay, I'm at a particular level. I don't feel I have much to share or I don't feel comfortable sharing. I want you to try to overcome that, um, that feeling because Anything that you share now, right, is something that you're going to build on and improve on as you gain experience. And so imagine, let's, let's just imagine 
four years, five years from now, and you're sharing certain experiences, things that you know right now versus what you know and you can do, let's say, when you get into eighth semester. And you can show that development, right? Imagine showing that development. It's not just always sharing the best of your work. It's, it's sometimes showing areas where you grew as, as a professional, as you improved and cultivated your, your development. This is where you can demonstrate that. All right, so I want, uh, I want you guys to have the confidence to, to really share different aspects of what you're completing, what you're doing this semester. You guys are working really hard this, uh, this semester. You're creating some good work. So think of a way that you can show that in an online space. That's the intention of the ePortfolio. So here, um, we're going to start off by talking a little bit about what we need to talk about in our teams. All right, so we're going to work in teams today, but I want to say I want to talk a little bit about how we can talk in our teams. And to do that, I want to open up another page here. Um, let's see. ePortfolio 2. So in ePortfolio 2, if you're online, you can also open this up. You can find it down below in the assignments, ePortfolio 2. Okay, so we want to start thinking about the tasks, right, that we can complete, what we can talk about in our teams. And so in this page, I'm right here, Teams for this week. Remember here, there, here's the PDF. You can open this up to see what teams you're in. If you do not recall, here are the teams again for this week. And we're not going to do a, a team assignment this week, but I want us to work in teams. Everything we're going to do this week is going to be individual. But I'd like for us to work in teams uh, to help each of us develop what we need to do for, uh, for the individual assignments. So I want us to think about conducting a meeting, right? So the meeting, when we get into our teams, we need to think about what we need to talk about. How do we conduct a meeting? So the purpose of this meeting is to create a video that's going to be located in the home page of your ePortfolio. It's like an introduction. So think of it as an introduction. And I'm going to call this a personal introduction. And, oops, personal introduction. And it should also be an introduction to your ePortfolio. Now let's take each one of these in turn. So we have a personal introduction, all right? So introduction, it's hard to type and talk at the same time. So personal introduction. Now this personal introduction again is gonna be located in the main page of your ePortfolio. What could you include, what would you include in a personal Introduction. Any ideas? Our name and the car, not the major, we are studying. Okay, so you can include your name and your major. You could include only your first name. You could include your complete name. You could keep it formal, right? If you're, uh, you could say, you know, Mr. and Mrs. If you want to be uh, formal, you decide. 
right? Do you want to be, you want, do you want to speak informally or formally? Do you want to include only your first name or your whole name? And perhaps the major. Now, as we're brainstorming and we're talking about what we could include and could not include in this online space, make sure that you're only including anything that you feel comfortable sharing. Don't, don't share anything that you feel uncomfortable sharing, something that you don't want the whole world to know. That's also very important, what not to include. So what else could you include in your personal introduction for an e-portfolio, a professional e-portfolio? Like a greeting. Okay. And we're going to list these in no particular order, right? So we're just kind of brainstorming right now. But I think a greeting is a very good thing to include. What, what would be some examples of some greetings? Um, the typically hello, good morning, or... <laughs> Right, so you could say hello. The good morning might be difficult, right? Because you don't know what time of day the person is actually watching you or what or accessing your e, your e-portfolio. But right, certainly hi, hello. How you doing? What's up? Something like that, right? So make sure that you are conscious of what is formal and what is informal, right? It can be either or, but be uh, conscious of which is which. If you say, hey, what's up, right? That's going to be pretty informal. In fact, that's very informal. You could say, hello there, right? That's pretty, that's, I guess, more formal, right? Um, good day. Again, good day may or may not be appropriate depending on the, the time of the day. All right, so we have we have a greeting. We have our name and a major, what else might you include in a personal introduction? Maybe I would, I would write a little description about me, uh, about myself. Uh, like, I'm a Dan, I like this, I like or I enjoy, enjoy doing this. Um, I'm Mexican, maybe, uh, I don't know. All right, so we could describe ourselves. Now, um, I'm going to put in parentheses because this is also really important that I want us to remember that we want to personalize our personal and professional e-portfolio. We want to make it our own. But remember the purpose of the e-portfolio. And what is the purpose of the e-portfolio? Uh, sharing your knowledge or what you can do. Um, Why? Why? For what end? What's the end goal? What's the end goal? It is about yourself, but for what uh, purpose? As uh, Since we are going to share it with the whole world, uh, maybe... Uh, we don't want, we want like our privacy or something like this. We want it personal. It's for us. It is for, it, it is for you in a sense. It is for you. But who else could it be for? Who's the target audience? Students. Students? Could be. Anybody else? Any other potential audiences that would be? Who, who do you think the target audience, the, the 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 main types of people that would benefit from accessing your e-portfolio? An enterprise, maybe a company. Right, a potential school, a potential employer, or a potential institution, business. Right, that's that's probably the target audience. Now, you did mention it for yourself, and I think it's also for yourself. It's actually a reflection or a uh, a way to reflect on your own development. It's a way to look at what you've accomplished 
and also for you to reflect on where you still want to go, what, what you want to be. And so this is actually an exercise in really keeping you aware of your progress, what you're, how you're growing as a professional and, you know, perhaps what you want to be. So I'm just going to put here as a side note, describe yourself, keep it professional, just keep it professional. So, um, it's okay to talk about likes, perhaps maybe some dislikes, but again, you want to keep it, uh, professional, something that, you know, keep, I would always remind myself that, okay, would I be comfortable sharing this with a director from a school or a principal of a school who might be looking at my e-portfolio for the first time to say, hey, should I hire this person or not? So keep that in the back of your mind, even though maybe at this point in your life, you're not really thinking in terms of finding a job, maybe you are, but... <clears throat> Always keep the end in mind. Like this is kind of where we're going with the e-portfolio. So a description of yourself. All right, that's a good idea. We got a greeting. We have to name, include our own name and perhaps the major. Anything else we would include in a personal introduction? Um, I would add our skills or my skills, what I can do. Um, my strengths, maybe. All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna put here strengths. Um, and we'll come back to that. All right, we'll come back to this idea here in a moment. Anything else that you would include in an introduction? Like a kind of motivation. Okay. Can you give an example? Mm, well, maybe I don't have an example right now on mind, but for example, something that makes the the person who is watching my video like keeping watching it because sometimes since the introduction you get bored. <laughs> right. Maintain interest. Any other ideas about ways to motivate <clears throat> someone else in this type of uh, video, like an introduction video? Remember that this video is going to be the first thing. It's going to be like in the home page. We'll see your video. And the first thing they're probably going to do is watch your video before maybe even looking at the rest of the, the main page or any sub pages. So how else... Any other suggestions about how to motivate in this video, in this introduction video? Or how to maintain interest? Mm, by encouraging people that this major is, is good for them, learning languages is good for it's good for people to to find a job or to travel around the world. Okay, I like that. So encourage them to learn a language or to study or travel. Some some form of encouragement. I think that's a, a good idea. I hadn't thought about that. That's a good idea. Any other thoughts? Any other ways to motivate in this video? No one else? No, teacher. <laughs> Show your face. Maybe this was obvious. Maybe we all assumed. We're going to show your face, but certainly you could create a video and not show your face. So I think by showing your face, that's a big motivation. You're already 
engaged in what the person is saying when they, you can see his or her face. So when you talk about showing your face, we're also thinking about nonverbal and verbal communication, especially nonverbal communication, making sure you're looking at the camera, making sure you're not fidgeting around, moving around a lot, uh, making sure that your face is in the frame. Like right now, I'm not sure if my face is in the frame. Is my Yeah, it is. All right. More or less. I'm still, I'm off center. So maybe that's bothering some of you. So maybe I should move the camera over a little bit, right, to make sure my face is in the middle of the frame, right? Maybe the microphone's a distraction. I could move the mic or whatever. But the idea is that what, you, what you're seeing is, uh, you know, is engaging, is motivating. Just by what you're seeing visually, that can motivate the person to, to listen more to what you have to say. So show your face and... Watch non-verbal communication. Your eye contact, your facial expressions, smile. Smile is super important as well. And um, that all makes a big difference. All right, anything else? Teacher, I have a question. Yes. Um, for example, body expressions, because I... I saw mus myself like many times before <laughs> and every single time that I like, mm, ay, se me olvidó la palabra. how do you say grabar? Uh, record to record? Video. Mm -hmm. uh, I move too much. I don't know why. <laughs> it is. is and informal? Yeah. Yeah. So, and this is one of the reasons why like, Take a look at your uh, discussions, your performance last week and weeks prior. Like, watch yourself and, and listen to yourself and see, okay, am I doing some things that maybe I was not aware of at the moment of speaking? Because, yeah, we get nervous. We're trying to figure out what we have to say. We might be looking up at the ceiling, looking off, you know, doing some just weird things with our, our bodies. And so maybe playing around with our hair, whatever. So try to, it just takes practice, right? So this is why creating a video like this, you're going to have opportunities. If you don't like the video performance, if you do the recording and you look back and you say, I, I think I can do better. I'm going to try it again. Try it as many times as you need to. But yes, pay close attention to how you're delivering your introduction, how you're introducing yourself. And don't be afraid to re-record and practice and even though you know what you're going to say maybe write out things that you want to say but yeah it just takes practice and uh, that's one of the reasons why i i want you guys to use the video as much as pr as possible so that you can look for yourself and see okay how am how's my performance right how do i do i do i look professional right do i and when i say professional I don't always mean that it has to be formal. You can be informal. You can have a very casual way about yourself, the way that you speak, right? It doesn't have to be formal, but it needs to be professional, right? So make sure that you understand the differences between that and just how you, you know, how you look. You know, this is all about you. So you're making a lot of decisions about how your space is going to look, both in terms of audio, video, and also images that you include, content, you know, maybe Word documents, PDFs. And so um, that's what I want to help you start to think about in these next two weeks, these last two weeks, in fact, is to really spend some time working and thinking about our e-portfolio. Because again, this is something I want you guys to continue on throughout, not just uh, this semester, not just for this class, but, you know, something that you maintain on your, on your own. So, yes, uh, verbal, nonverbal communication, right? Those are some other things. All right, so these are some ideas. And there's some other things that we could talk about when we think about a personal introduction. But we've got a good start here. You've got some good ideas here to build on. Uh, the, the second aspect is to not only introduce yourself, but also to introduce 
introduce your ePortfolio. Now, what 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 am I talking about here, or what might this look like, or some examples? What do I mean by introduce your ePortfolio? Uh, maybe like talk a little bit about what is an ePortfolio and what it contains. I don't know. Okay, it could, right? Or okay, define <clears throat> any portfolio. <clears throat> That's certainly something that you could uh, discuss. You could say, okay, this this is what this is, right? This is what my e portfolio is. Define it. Any other suggestions? Where is the the purpose? I like that one. The purpose of your e-portfolio. Notice I'm using the, pro, the uh, possessive adjective your, e-portfolio. The purpose of your e-portfolio. Now, all of our purposes are similar in that they're for some professional purpose. But you can make it more specific. If your ideal job, if you know now that you like to teach kids in an elementary school or you want to teach abroad, there's nothing wrong with setting a purpose that's a little bit more specific, maybe specific to your professional goals, your professional objectives, All right? So the purpose of the ePortfolio, I think, is a good, good thing to include. Any other suggestions? Uh, maybe include, like, what are we going to do to reach those goals? All right. So um, how do you want to word this? How can we say that? Mm. What you're going to do to achieve your goals. All right. So mm. hmm. how, should, how can we say that? Ways to achieve uh, your goals, something like that? Yeah. Ways to achieve your goals. Okay, you could include that if that is part of the ePortfolio. So remember that you're introducing the ePortfolio, and so just make sure that you link the ways that you're achieving your goals in terms of the ePortfolio, the visual space that they're looking at at the time that they're listening and watching your video. All right, so I'm just going to put a note here, maybe tie it to the ePortfolio or link it to the ePortfolio. All right, any other suggestions about what we could include in an introduction to an ePortfolio? Maybe the topics or the materials that people can uh, finding or e-portfolio. Yeah, I think that's a really good idea. I'm going to use the word navigation. Maybe we can describe the navigation or how to get around the e-portfolio. Now, this is just an introduction, right? So you don't have to go into great detail about the entire ePortfolio. But this is talking about the organization. Describe the navigation or how to get around the ePortfolio. I'm going to put in parentheses organization. The organization of the ePortfolio. I think this is a really good thing to include so that you can say, okay, this ePortfolio is organized as follows. Right? And they're also looking at the ePortfolio as you're describing it. So they're listening to you and they're looking at your homepage. And when you're describing your ePortfolio at this point, because it's an introduction, I don't want you to go to any other pages. It's only the homepage. Now, there are two ways and these are two options that you can uh, do to create your video that's going to be located 
in the home page, the main page of your ePortfolio. One option is you do a talking head video, which is just showing your whole face, right? So the, your face takes up the whole screen and you're just talking. That's one way. Another way is where you have your video as an insert, maybe at the bottom left or right hand corner of the screen or down at the bottom, where maybe you're sharing your screen and you're sharing the main page of your ePortfolio. All right, so these I think are two ways, two options that you have for creating this one video that could include both your personal introduction and your introduction to your ePortfolio. Right. So I think we have a good start here of some good ideas. Right. What I'd like for us to do now is to uh, separate into teams. And I want you to have a team meeting about how to create this, this opening video, this video that should include both a personal introduction and introduce your ePortfolio. Now, in your meetings, I would like for each team to dedicate one person as the chair of the meeting. The chair is the person who is going to conduct or who is in charge of the meeting. This is the person who's going to be the facilitator or help everyone speak and have everyone voice their opinions about what you could include in this video. Much like what we're doing today, right? The, uh, the disadvantage of us doing this type of conversation, though, is we have how many of us are in today's group? Like 30-something? Okay, I didn't check to see how many of us are here today. But we're not able to hear everybody speak. Only a couple, two, four, five people are able to, to speak because we have a lot of members online. But in your team, it'll be a smaller team. It'll be a team, I think, of four. So everyone is going to be encouraged to speak. But you do need to assign one person who is comfortable be with being in charge of uh, facilitating the discussion, asking the questions, and asking for answers and participation about just like what we're doing here. I would include a Word document and do an outline, basically like what we're doing here. And you decide, you voice your opinions. At the end of the day, each one of you can decide however you want to do it. At the end of the day, you can decide even if it's different than your teammates. If your teammates have other ideas and you don't agree, that's fine. But I want you to first to talk about it in, in a meeting in a meeting format, right? Where you're talking very much like what we're doing today. I'm trying to demonstrate what I would like for you to do in your own team meeting, but I would like for you to record your team meeting. Of course, I'm encouraging you to speak in English throughout the entire meeting. And I would like for you to share your screen in your team meeting, just like I'm doing so that we can see your faces and we can see the, the meeting notes, that is the Word document. And I would like for you to upload the recording of your meeting to week 15. We're in week 15, so we need a new folder for this week. We'll continue recording our meetings, but I, I'm, I want us to pay close attention to how you conduct the meeting. Again, a successful meeting will be one that everyone is contributing, talking about what is to be included in, in the introduction video and what not to include perhaps, but that you are creating a list, a brainstorming list of things that you could include and probably building on the list that I have here, right? There's some other things that we haven't talked about that I think your team could also talk about. But the main thing is that everybody has an opinion that everybody's contributing to the ideas of potential things to include in their, in their video. All right, so this is what I would like to do for the remainder of today's class.
right? Um, I don't know how long the meeting has to last. I, it's going to be up to you how long it needs to last. But I want, uh, I would like for you to have a good list of possible things to con uh, consider. And maybe some of these things that we've talked about, you could go more specific. Notice as, as I go more specific, I just continue my outline and you could you could have examples of, for example, a greeting, right? Whatever, um, however you need or whatever you need to add to uh, the information, you can be more specific by creating another subheading, just as uh, we have here. All righty, guys. Any questions about what we're going to do today? Today's task. That's true. All right, so I'll go ahead and mute my mic and go ahead and break out into your teams. We will reconvene in one hour at 940 to close the class. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, did uh, somebody have a question? Yes, it's me, Tanya. Yes, go ahead. Having problems and connecting me. So uh, we're going to do another an, another e-portfolio. Uh, besides what already did about the activities that help us to improve our language, it's going to be another one different. Uh, the you, what are you referring to? The the other e-portfolio or? Yeah, the other so. In this class, we're going to create another one, another. Um, have you already created an e-portfolio? Yes, sure. Uh, oh. In that, well, I think it is the, the page that we create about the activities that, which improve us, no, which help us to improve our English. Yeah, so this is going to be the same e-portfolio. Um, if you're, yeah. let me share. Let me open my screen here. Share my screen. Okay, so do you see my screen? Mm. Yes, you can. All right. So remember a couple of weeks ago, we created this page, and I asked everyone to share with me a link to their ePortfolio. So this is going to be the same ePortfolio that we're talking about uh, this week and next week and you know I'm basically suggesting that you include or that you use this one e-portfolio throughout your the entire BA even when you go into uh, the teaching field right but the it, there's just one e-portfolio teacher so uh, this well for example in, the, in those comments I, I put a comment that is Tanya forever in the yeah here's your e-portfolio no uh, that's mine. So right. In that, I'm going to, yeah, how you can see, I put the, the audios and the stuff. Uh, so what do I have to do? Like to complete it more in, in the same way? All right. So today, all right. So today, what I'd like for us to do is in your teams. Yeah. Uh, let me go back to today's activity. Portfolio two. This is the. This is for today, right? This is a good guide here. So, um, I want us to divide up into our teams and talk about what you could include in an introductory video that you could place in your homepage that includes a personal introduction and an introduction to your e-portfolio. And we talked about some possible things to include, but I want you to continue this list. In fact, you uh, as a group create your own list of things that you could include in your own video. Um, and at this point, I, I'm asking you to record the meeting from today. And, and at this point, that's all I'm asking. I'm not, uh, yeah, it's just the, basically the meeting for you to brainstorm and talk about what you can include in uh, in your videos. Okay, so 
Uh, today, where uh, as I understand you, it was um, to record our meeting in, in Google Teams. No, in Teams Microsoft. Yeah, we're going to record like we, while we talk today. Right, you're going to talk with your teammates and you're going to record the meeting talking about basically like what we did, like a, as a whole group. I'm going to ask that you do the same just for your, your team. But maybe you can be more specific and talk more in detail about some of the things or additional things that we haven't talked about. Those could be discussed with your teammates. Okay. And we're going to do um, together uh, a page, like a thing, like another page. No. No, this is all going to be oh, done individually. The video itself will be individual. But today's activity is a group activity for you to uh, work together with your class, some of your classmates to get some ideas about what you could include in your video. But you can, you can decide on what you want to, to say and what you want to do for your own video. Okay, teacher. It's clear for all me right. that I know. Okay. Yeah. All righty. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, it is 9.40. We'll go ahead and close today's class. I, I have uploaded grades for last week's podcast. And uh, just a quick shout out to Monica for maintaining a, a public podcast all semester. I'm sharing my screen. Hopefully you can see this. I would check it out if you haven't already. It's really nice, nicely done. Really great topics. Very organized and uh, yeah, I think I think that's great. Uh, as you guys are thinking about your e-portfolios, I know that some of you have uh, have not chosen to create a public podcast. That's fine, but I recommend that you consider at least some of your podcasts in your e-portfolio. Uh, you you guys have been doing a really good job and have improved a lot. I feel that you're getting. At least it sounds like you have more confidence. I'm not sure how you feel. Hopefully you feel like you have more confidence when you're speaking. But it certainly sounds like you have more confidence as we've progressed throughout the semester. So I hope that you recognize that and are choosing uh, some of your favorite podcasts to, to uh, save that and publish it in your ePortfolio. We can talk more about that tomorrow. Today we wanted to focus mainly on the introduction video. So uh, hopefully you've had a chance to record your meetings. Make sure that you upload the recording of your meeting to a week five folder. I want to uh, look at those meetings and seeing how you conduct your, your business meeting, your meeting for discussing how you want to create your initial video. Are there any questions about today's task? No, teacher. Thank you. No, teacher. All right, so tomorrow we'll have, we'll have a TOEFL listening at the first part of the class. Then the remainder part of the class will uh, continue thinking about uh, today's task and uh, thinking about specifically the kind of video we want to create for uh, the, uh, the main page. And we'll talk also about what we should and should not include in the home page of our ePortfolio. All right, so I think we'll stop there, guys. I hope you guys have a great day today, and we'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Thank you, teacher. See you. Thank you, teacher. Bye. 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 Thank you, teacher. Bye. Bye.